Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to review Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. If you don't know already, Luigi's Mansion 2 on the Nintendo 3DS is where I got my start for the Luigi's Mansion franchise. And while I'm reviewing the HD version of Luigi's Mansion 2, I might as well share my opinion on Luigi's Mansion 2 in general, because I did prefer it to the first Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? The gameplay in Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is similar to Luigi's Mansion 1, since it is a ghost hunting game. But there are differences in Luigi's Mansion 2's gameplay compared to the GameCube original. First of all, the straw bulb is a mechanic that allows you to stun ghosts, making them easier to catch. And the dark light can help reveal hidden objects, which could contain anything, like some gold, which can go towards upgrades for the Poltergust 5000, gems that can be collected within each of the five mansions, and booze, and when all of them are caught in one mansion, an extra level is unlocked. And what makes Luigi's Mansion 2 different from Luigi's Mansion 1 is the structure, since it relies on a mission-based structure unlike the original game. In each mansion, there are five levels, with the exception of the Secret Mine, which only had three, one boss, and one secret level if you collect all of the booze. Luigi's Mansion 2 has five mansions to explore, Gloomy Manor, Haunted Towers, Old Clockworks, The Secret Mine, and The Treacherous Mansion. And with The Secret Mine, even though it's the shortest of the five mansions, The Secret Mine and The Treacherous Mansion are my two favourites in the whole game. And while Luigi's Mansion 2 is different in terms of how the game is structured, it wasn't something I was really bothered about growing up. After all, I was only 9 years old in 2013, so I didn't understand what the first Luigi's Mansion was like in comparison to the first. I do think the boss design is pretty underrated as well. Apart from the possessor part, the bosses in the game are unique on how each boss is defeated, like the Spider Queen, where you need to set fire to a part of her web, a set of possessed treehouse stairs where you have to dodge its attacks until it becomes vulnerable, the belfry clock where you fight 12 waves of enemies, an ice monster where you throw bombs in its mouth, and a round of knights as well as one giant knight in the final wave. And all five of these bosses are well designed, but I think the possessor part all do the same thing, which did take away from, from the boss design a bit. And if they were just the bosses on their own, or the portrait ghosts, that would be fine. But now looking back at the boss design, it's underrated with the only flaw being the possessors. Now we're moving on to the graphics. The original game already looked good for a 3DS game that released in 2013. But the Switch version though, it's noticeable that the game looks like it was designed for the 3DS. And if you compare Luigi's Mansion 2 HD and Luigi's Mansion 3 side by side, you can easily see a night and day difference between the two. And while the graphics of Luigi's Mansion 2 aren't bad, since I do have a few good things to say about the graphics, I just feel like with Luigi's Mansion 2 HD and Detective Pikachu Returns, the graphics look like they were designed for the 3DS and not the Switch. The visuals in Luigi's Mansion 2 HD are more clear than the 3DS original. The character, animations, and facial expressions are now smoother and more noticeable, as some of the Toads may have not had facial expressions at all in the 3DS original. And while the final cutscene in the whole game was in low frame rate in the original, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, while still in 30 frames per second, improves on the low frame rate cutscenes from the 3DS original. Textures have been added to some objects in the game, such as Luigi's clothing, and the enemy ghosts 
pop out better visually than they did in the original on the 3DS, since those now have a glowing effect in the HD re-release, unlike the 3DS original. And while not on par with Luigi's Mansion 3, the graphics do have a fair amount of changes, even if it doesn't have the lighting that Luigi's Mansion 3 does. Next, we are moving on to the characters. While I don't need to explain the main three, only because I already did in my review of the original Luigi's Mansion, so the only character I really need to explain here is King Boo, since I think his boss design and writing is better in the sequel compared to the original on the GameCube. But why have I written a character section for this video when there's not that much to talk about? Well, I thought I would use this section to talk about the ghosts. Starting off with Polterpop, who does return in Luigi's Mansion 3, Polterpop starts off as a ghost that Luigi has to chase around the Haunted Towers to obtain the key that Polterpop swallowed. And while Polterpop doesn't have any writing in him, I think Polterpop is likeable in terms of design and personality. And now for the regular enemy ghosts. There are seven types of enemy ghosts excluding variants and one-offs. And first, we have the Greenies. While Greenies are the more standard enemy ghosts within the game, they occasionally use different items as armor and weapons. And the Greenies also have a gold variant in the game, which rewards you with gold. Slammers are the more stronger type of enemy ghosts, which you might want to be careful being in a room with a lot of them at the same time. And while I do prefer the designs of the Hammers in Luigi's Mansion 3, I still think the Slammers, in terms of design, fit the ghost type's behaviour and personality. The Hiders, which hide random objects within a room until you find them, and they can sneak attack Luigi by throwing random objects if not careful. Sneakers can turn invisible, which can allow them to sneak up on Luigi and jump scare him. Luigi can use a dark light to catch them before Luigi can be jump scared. While creepers, not these creepers, act in a similar way to the sneakers, they are more slimy in design and can sometimes multiply into more than one. The gobbers, which can't move due to the, the size of their stomachs, they can devour anything in their path. They can devour anything in their path and can throw up puddles of goo at Luigi, which can cause him to slip. It is important when fighting this type to focus on catching the other ghosts before coming to the gobber. And the last enemy type is the poltergeist, a big-headed ghost with telekinetic power. These ghosts can use objects to defend themselves from the strobal and can also use their telekinetic power and to attack Luigi while he tries to get caught. And their variant, who looks a lot like Megamind, not the directed streaming piece of crap Megamind, the good Megamind. And there is a mini-boss in Haunted Towers with three ghost sisters named Lucinda, Belinda, and Herlinda. And that's practically the best way I can do a character section for Luigi Mansion 2, because the main characters don't really need any form of introduction, so I can explain the different types of ghosts there are in the game. Now we move on to the story. The story does feel built up from when you start the game up. Unlike the original Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube, which just shows a cutscene of Luigi approaching the mansion with literally no context brought to the story until Professor Egad enters the scene. The sequel, however, opens up with King Boo destroying the Dark Moon, the ghosts going rogue, and Luigi 
transporting to Egad's lap. While I don't think that the pacing is awkward, like in Luigi's Mansion 1, I would say the pacing is fairly decent, with the only pacing issue lying within the secret mine with the secret mine only having three missions in it. Which is a shame, because that's my favourite of the five mansions. But the story doesn't feel rushed or slow, and I would say that the pacing of Luigi's Mansion 2 is just right. But don't forget, the amount of time to complete a mission does depend on the player. And what helps this time is that you actually have a set of instructions to follow when exploring the mansions. And while the story is divided into multiple mansions instead of one, I think Luigi's Mansion 2 provides variety with the mansions in terms of theme, aesthetic, and design. And I do hope we get another Luigi's Mansion game like Luigi's Mansion 2 in the future. I wouldn't mind if it expanded into some sort of sub-series for Luigi's Mansion. When it comes to changes from the original game, there isn't really that much to talk about. While the graphics are more clear than the original game, there isn't anything new to offer. The only things I can say are different from the 3DS version of Luigi's Mansion 2 is it translates fairly into a one-screen experience, and the controls are more like Luigi's Mansion 3 now. While I am slightly disappointed we didn't get any new content for the remaster of Luigi's Mansion 2, especially since it was announced one year prior to the game's release, I still think Scare Scraper Mode is a great mode to play for completionists. But what could have Luigi's Mansion 2 HD have added to make it better? Well, so here are like the new features I think should have been added. Scare Scraper could have been updated to have couch co-op included and with the addition of Scare Scraper ghost skins for hiders and creepers. A free roam mode that allows you to freely roam the mansion to your heart's content and even catch ghosts as you explore. One extra mansion to explore with a mini story attached to it and a music player and a gallery for concept art in Egad's lab. While there isn't that much I would change about Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, it was disappointing that we waited a year for no new content to be added. But at the end of the day, even without the new content added in, Luigi's Mansion 2 is still a great game. Luigi's Mansion 2 is probably my favourite Luigi's Mansion game, period. And to see it get a remaster was nice to hear, even though it was disappointing that we didn't get anything new in terms of content. Do I recommend the game? It mainly depends on the person. If you already played it on the 3DS, there isn't much you're missing out on. If you didn't play the original on 3DS, Definitely, even though I already played it on the 3DS back in 2013, the reason I picked it up is because it was one of my favourites on the 3DS. Even if the Switch remaster is inferior to the 3DS original game by one point. And I still think it's safe to give Luigi's Mansion 2 HD its collector perk. And overall, I give Luigi's Mansion 2 HD an 8 out of 10. While it is one point short from the original on the 3DS, which has a score of 9, and while not that much has changed from Luigi's Mansion 2 on the 3DS in terms of content, it's still a game I recommend playing if you've already played it on the 3DS or haven't played it before. It may not be up there with the 3DS original or Luigi's Mansion 3, but it's a welcome addition to the Nintendo Switch library. So guys, what did you think of my review for Luigi's Mansion 2 HD? And I might review Luigi's Mansion 3 to end Spooky Month. If people want it, I'll do it, because with the original Luigi's Mansion and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, 
that only leaves Luigi's Mansion 3 to be reviewed. And, and next week's BB-8 House reviews? Yikes. It's probably not going to be a good one. It's the Borderlands movie next week. By the time this is uploaded, it, it would have already been released. But as of this recording, I haven't watched it yet. And by the looks of things, I do apologize in advance if next week's BB-8 House reviews is a little more negative. Only because it's the Borderlands movie. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.